If you are a complete beginner and you want to start investing, here is a step-by-step -step plan for you. So with that, let's talk about that right now, coming up next. So the first thing you need to do is to set clear investment goals. I don't care if you write it on a piece of tissue paper, just write it down. Because what is written down is going to get done. What do you want to use this money for? Do you want to use it to retire? At 50 rather than 65, you want to pay for your kids' children. You want to buy a new home, buy a new Lamborghini. What do you want to use that money for? That's very important because your goals are going to tell you how long should you stay invested, what should you invest in, and how do you balance your portfolio so that you can achieve your long-term or maybe medium-term, short-term financial goals. There's no hard and fast rule as to what you should invest in, but here's a general guideline, okay? If your financial goal is like in 20, 30 years time, then you can afford to take higher risk investments because you know why? Your investments will then have more time for you to sustain temporary losses. But if you want to go to college in the next three to four years, and your dad don't want to pay for it, and you want to depend on yourself, okay? It doesn't make sense for you to invest in high-risk assets. But what you invest in, what you don't invest in, also depends on the second factor, okay? So the second step you need to take is find out what is your risk appetite, what is your risk tolerance. Are you conservative? Are you somewhere in the middle? Or are you a crazy risk taker? Because your risk appetite is going to determine what kind of asset you pick and how you balance your portfolio and also your investment strategy. Third thing, this is very important, okay? Because too many people don't even follow this third step and then they get burned and all that. Build an emergency fund. Make sure you invest money that you can afford to lose. Don't invest your next month's rent money and that's all you have. Because I've seen a lot of people, Karen, I only have $200 in my bank account and I put it on to the financial markets and I lost everything. Can you please donate me $50,000? Air minimum have at least 6 months of emergency money for rainy days. Then set aside a budget, okay? This is the fourth step. Create a budget. How much do you want to invest? How much money do you have that when you lose it, you still can pay for your car, for your home? If you don't know how to budget, okay? This is not sponsored, okay? Get a budget book. This is not any kind of journal. This is like for you to track your expenses and then there are pockets here this amount of money for snacks this amount of money for shopping let me just open this ziplock bag okay i cannot open put that cash inside close it don't touch it when you go shopping you just carry this because when you put ten dollar inside your shopping pocket and you want to spend more to buy stuff you don't need this book will control you if you can't control yourself Number five, okay, a lot of people have credit card debt that they don't even pay off every single month. So number five, pay off high interest debt. Make sure you can afford to pay off your minimum balance on your credit card before you start investing. Because I don't want you to invest your money, earn maybe 8% per year, and then your credit card interest rate per year is like 20%. It doesn't make sense. Step number six, this requires a lot of patience, discipline. Learn about all the investment options. Understand what are your options, what are your choices. And in order to do that, you got to put in the work to study about the basics of investing, the basics of financial markets, basics of personal finance. Learn about stocks, bonds, options, futures, ETFs, currencies, real estate. Don't need to go into detail, just understand the risk associated with each of these asset classes. So you pick one that is in line with your investment goals and also risk appetite. You gotta add one more thing which is step number seven, okay? Learn the different investment strategies and then determine the strategy that you want to use. Do you wanna engage in passive investing? Just put your money into ETFs, index funds? Or do you wanna be more active in it to pick stocks yourself? You do the research yourself, you do the investing yourself. Which one do you prefer? So it depends on your time as well because if you're a working mom and then you got two kids to take care of and then three fur babies, then it's like a lot on your plate. You have no time to even meditate. Then it's better for you to hand that money to somebody who can manage that money for you. By the way, I don't provide account management. Those are all impersonators. Once you have decided what kind of strategy you want, then go on to step number eight, which is open a brokerage account and then practice using virtual money for at least to be safe 
six months. I know a lot of people feel like six months is too long. Isn't it better than spending three, four years studying for a master's, PhD, MBA, spending 50k, 40k, and then accumulating a lot of student debt only to get a slim chance of getting promoted in your job, which you will work until you're 65? Isn't that a lot more mentally, financially taxing? What is six months? For you to practice investing properly so that you can eventually become good at it and then this skill will make you money for the rest of your life might even potentially replace your job why not stop letting people control your life i've been controlled for years i tell you it is not fun once you practice in your virtual account and then you are profitable you have proven to yourself that you want you can make money in demo account then start a small account start small I don't care if you have a million dollars in your bank, start small. $500, $1,000, just practice with a small account. This will allow you to get comfortable with investing because chances are in your first to second year, you're gonna make a lot of stupid mistakes like I did. So start small so that you can make mistakes without risking too much money. And then once you are profitable with that small account, then you gradually add more. And then this comes to step number 10, okay? As time passes, gradually monitor and adjust your portfolio. Make sure you monitor your investments regularly. Don't need to look at it every day. Once a week, bare minimum. If you're working, then look at it at the weekends. And if you need to adjust your portfolio, because maybe your risk appetite might change in the future, and then your goals might change in the future. If you find that as you grow older, your risk appetite decrease for some reason, then you add more bonds and then only allocate a little bit in stocks, for example. For some people, when they get older, they want to take more risk, then you add more stocks and then cut down on bonds. And if you don't know what broker to start with, you can start with this broker that is regulated by Monetary Authority of Singapore. Mumo is very easy to use and allows you to invest in stocks and also allows you to trade forex as well. And from now until 31st of May, they are giving away $30 worth of cash coupon for the first 100 forex new account opening and making one forex transaction via my link. So I'll put link down in the description below. And remember to become a successful investor, put in the work, put in the patience, put in the discipline because 90% of people aren't willing to do that. And then eventually you can walk into office one day and be like, I am done with you. Happy investing, I'll talk to you in the next video, bye.